Thank you, Professor Lamert. My name is Vipwa Kuye Muharukwa. Let me stand by the protocol as observed by Mr. Dix. But today I say at the outset that it is indeed a privilege, even if it was a last minute proposition to be sharing the stage with Professor Lamert to be opening this fourth conference. Dear esteemed guests of Namibia, the leadership of uh, CAS under Mr. Dix, esteemed members of parliament, both from Africa and Germany, welcome to Namibia. We are blessed to have you in Namibia, Venduk, because you have brought rain. I have a silent rule in my house that my children don't sing the song, Rain, Rain, Go Away, We Want to Play, because we value rain so much. Now this morning, when I got the invitation to make this speech, I knew two things. One is that I had to be very brief, and two is that we'll have a very esteemed audience, and it is indeed so from the faces that one sees and has seen in the past. So I pondered on how do you welcome people who know it all, people who know the fields they represent. And I found my answer in something very simple. Why are we in Namibia today? Why are we in this very room today? It is to converse, to speak with one another. And Mr. Dick said to have an open, frank conversations or conversation amongst friends. Now the importance of, the converse, of a conversation. It is that it is a mode and a way through which we as human beings convey emotions, desire, express wishes, dislikes, likes, and hopes and aspirations for the future. And when you as a human being converse with another, you expect, or at least I do, one thing, and it's a reaction. An internal reaction that the person that I am speaking with, that I am engaged in conversation with, is internalizing, absorbing that which I am conveying to them. And secondly, an outward reaction, a show that that which the person has internalized through actions either affirms or rejects. Mm -hmm. But the mere fact that that person lives out of that conversation is an outward reaction. For if there is no reaction, inwardly and outwardly, it is just conversation for the sake of conversation. We are here to talk about Europe's policy on Africa, about Europe's bilateral relations, I suppose, with many African nations, about our multilateral relations with Africa generally and Europe generally. Conversation is therefore important and the reaction is therefore much more important to craft the policies that will serve eventually that which we want to do jointly. Why is it that it is important that Africa and Europe have the conversation, and Professor Lamert has touched it quite rightly, that the perception of the relationship between the two continents has to be modernized there has to be a realization within Europe generally that Africa is an important player in the trajectory or the, in the reform of one geopolitics, but also the global socioeconomic order. 
Similarly, in Africa, there must be a realization that Europe has the benefit of hindsight, the experience in development that will help Africa leapfrog certain steps that would be unnecessary with hindsight in our development trajectory. Africa has challenges. You have states in Africa where democracy has reclined. Africa generally has a youth bulge. A youth bulge that can be a blessing to the world. But that is currently a challenge for Africa. Because of the level of education that we are meeting out and imparting on our youth. Africa needs Europe to have policies that addresses the modernization of education in Africa. In turn, Europe needs Africa to produce a workforce that is able to assist in various ways and in various sectors from Europe, as much as Europe needs the energy resources from Africa. But with the opportunity of energy comes the risk of disaster. I think here of not so long ago in the UK, a few years back, I suppose 1988, Piper Alpha in the North Sea. I'm thinking of the Macondo disaster in the Gulf of Mexico, Montara in Australia, offshore this is. Whilst Africa has the potential to reap benefits from these resources, there is a huge environmental risk that is looming if Africa does not have the expertise to ensure that it has laws in place to safeguard the installations and wells that are being drilled in offshore Namibia or offshore Africa and even onshore. Those sort of expertise as needed in Africa is what Africa needs to be addressed in the European policy on Africa. How Europe will help Africa to produce energy in a cost effective or cost efficient manner but safe for the environment. Indeed, the continent also has a challenge on health. It is indeed quite correct and quite desirable that our conversations on policy should linger around what possibilities there are in terms of Europe to assist their sister continent, Africa, in how to enhance and modernize our health systems. But policy can never be good policy unless it's rooted in conversation. Policy must be a balance between the requests, desires, and one once of the benefactor of the policy, so to say, but it must also be a balance to whoever is to met out the benefit. If it is Africa resourcing Europe in various ways, it must be a balance between what Africa can give and what Europe would request. To this end, one is talking about a policy or listening to one another or converse, conversing on a policy or policies that would work to something to this effect. Where we say the extractive industry in Africa, DRC, Angola, 
Namibia, Botswana, has been supplying the world with raw material. Namibia supplying the world with fish in many events unprocessed. Diamonds unprocessed. Zambia supplying the world with copper unprocessed. Whilst the policy speaks or should speak as to how Europe as a global partner to Africa, as a global citizen with Africa, should benefit from these resources, the policy should also talk about how Europe will transform the African extractive sector into one that adds value to these commodities. Eventually, what one is saying is that policy must be a win-win situation. That is the new world order that we need. That is the new basis of bilateral relations that we need as Africans, but also as Europe, as all equal members of the human race. As I go to conclude, climate change and its impact is serious in Africa. So the goal to get to net zero is important for Africa. More important in the sense that Africa is not the biggest polluter. But it has been argued and it is argued and I do believe in the argument that Africa suffers the most. The soil that we stand on, the country that we stand on, Namibia, is one of those countries. Standing before you is a farmer, as well as a member of parliament. Our farming in Namibia, and I do not think Namibia is the only country, has become volatile and unpredictable. A policy, a Europe-Africa policy, must address in my considered view, humble view that is, how we jointly as partners can tap into each other's technologies, into each other's know-how, into how to modernize the agricultural sector in Africa. It helps, it would, such policy would help Africa not only feed its people, but it would also help Africa mitigate the impact of climate change on its continent, on, on, its, on its soils and on its people. Lastly, I reiterate what I have said when I, begin, when I began. Conversation that doesn't have result is but mere conversation for the sake of conversation. When we discuss policy, our discussions must yield a result. A result in a policy that reflects that indeed this policy is born out of having understood what Europe can take from Africa, what Africa can give to Europe, and what Europe can give to Africa and what Africa can take from Europe. The policy must first reflect that understanding. Secondly, the reaction that is needed from such policy is the change on the ground. That we have understood one another we have documented and internalized our, our understanding of each other and therefore these are the transformations that we are bringing between our two continents. If this conference does not yield into transformation, then I'm afraid I would have to say it would be conversation for the sake of conversation. But having dealt 
and been involved with the Conrad, Conrad Adenauer Stiftung. And of course, having noted the esteemed uh, leadership of uh, Professor, I would know and I have faith and I trust that indeed the, conversa the conversations that we are having here will yield into that reaction and transformation that we all need. Welcome to Vinduk. Enjoy Vinduk. Uh, please do have our meet. Uh, it, it sometimes it's it's okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>